Hello folks, it's Tuesday, February 11th, and I'm back again because I'm excited and just want to share, you know, music and news with you. So um, it was announced today by Slowdown, uh, one of the premier music venues in Omaha, that the Damo Suzuki show is on and Indrima is the band. So... I'm super excited. It's public. I um, have been sharing it on Twitter and um, Facebook and um, on Instagram. Those are the uh, social media platforms that I mainly use. I am extremely excited. Um, Can is a very important band in my life. And um, like... Like... Um, like many of those groundbreaking moments in your life where you remember exactly where you were when something happened. I remember the moment I first heard Can. It was that significant and it was that difficult. <clears throat> but significant. And I was like 17, I think, when I first heard them. And I have a lot of their stuff. They have a lot of records. I've shown them before. I'm not going to pull them all down right now. The one that I have out that I was recently playing is the Can Singles um, release, three record set, which is a great way. I'm glad that they did this. You know, of course, it's a cash in, but at the same time, I love the fact that all the singles are put together like this and you can hear them chronologically and it really works, actually. It really does. I'm really happy about the show because Donald Suzuki is. Um, a real spiritual guy and he is um uh he lives in the moment so he's not about recreating the past he doesn't do canned songs what happens is that wherever he plays um the band that he plays with we improvise now i haven't met him yet so i don't know if he will have any instructions i kind of doubt it I, you know I, I really imagine that what will happen is that he will just um be ready to plug into what we do. I've watched several um, videos as well as listened to a lot of Damo Suzuki network, network recordings. They're all different, you know, and it's all about just capturing music. I like that, and uh, I enjoy I enjoy improvising a lot. I'm really happy that we were chosen for this, and it does seem fitting to me that Damo, a member of Can, finally comes to Omaha, and I get to participate. I know that I'm one of the first people, not, you know, I don't know this factually, factually, but I do know, probably statistically, I'm one, probably one of the first people in Omaha, much less Nebraska, who uh, knew anything much less like the band Can. So I'm really excited about this. In other not so exciting news, we've lost some more musicians. One you're hearing about, the other one you're not. I'm gonna mention the one you hear about first. It was just mentioned, um, Lyle Mays, um, keyboardist with Pat Metheny primarily, just passed away. 66, a year, uh, two years older than me. Um, great, great musician with a real distinct ear and for composing and playing. Really beautiful lyrical stuff. Uh, I got to see Lyle with Pat Metheny many, many years ago, probably back in the 80s. It was memorable. It was really good. Bob Moses was on drums. So rest in peace. Another musician who was primarily a, st a session and a hired hand, but a great musician nonetheless, is Ronnie Drayton. I don't have any solo records of his, but I was just playing some Sakamoto. He's played with everyone, you know, everyone from Ryuichi Sakamoto to you name it, Ronnie Drayton. I was D-R-A-Y... T-O-N, a brother. And then I was watching a recent uh, interview with him. Um, well, maybe not that recent, but I looked it up after I found out he passed away. And his background is just immense. He's, I mean, you know, he was a very good guitarist and just played with everyone. And he seemed like a good soul. And he just died. Rest in peace. Yesterday I got some more records. One that I ordered, and I don't order I don't buy records um, online but this was something that I saw and I said okay I have to get I do have to get this okay 
Sensation, Sensation Fix is a um, psych prog band based out of Italy in the 70s, um, headed by a man named Franco Falsini. And they put out about seven albums, but the first one was actually um, a, a demo recording of their music that they made, I guess, for radio and television trying to get jobs, and it was never properly released. Um, very hard to find, very rare. It was recently, finally released in an edition of 500 copies. And I saw where a friend online bought a copy and I looked at the vinyl and I said, I, that's just beautiful. I really like, I want, I want a copy. There's only 500 of them. I've always liked this cover, number one. I like their covers in general. I'll show the others. But this one, which had not been released, I always thought to myself, wow, that's a cool cover. I, I, I wish I could have that. So it got, it finally got issued. It looks like it's a, um, it looks official. You know, it looks like it's an official licensing, in other words, okay? But the, the vinyl, I said, okay, I got to have that. That's cool. And it plays fine. The, the audio fidelity is low, you know. It's not as low as I was thinking it was going to be. It actually sounds better. And the pressing is, is just fine. At the end of side one, it's a little noisy. But I can live with that with, um, I can live with that. It's beautiful, really happy to get that. And something unexpected came in the mail from from John. I won't say the last name. I went to thank him online and uh, we're not friends on Facebook anymore. Note my response, sending me records. <laughs> I don't, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, he sent me two good records two records that you know i'm very happy to um add to my collection it's right up it's right up my alley he sent me another a sonic youth one on their um label j'accuse j'accuse ted hughes agnes b musique i played what the first side of this so much is going on my time is just getting ready for the show and all the communication going on for the Adult Swim. It's crazy. But I did get to listen to part of this, and I really like it. I like Sonic Youth. I just don't play them a lot right now. I've seen them live two or th three times. Three times. And then he sent me a Flying Saucer Attack album. I love Flying Saucer Attack. Droney, and then, and then also kind of, um, they'll have these kind of uh, almost shoegazy songs too with vocals further thank you John seriously I also have to um, say that I heard from the person that sent this to me and uh, I really don't mean to hurt anyone's feelings I have to be honest okay my like I said my first impression of this one okay it turns out the person that sent me their other album is the one that sent me this one, okay? Um, hopefully there will be a time when I'm in the mood to listen to it. It moves slow and it is very repetitive, you know? And so, uh, depending on when I hear it, it comes off boring. And I don't mean to offend anyone, that's honest. I shared with the friend who sent this to me, because he contacted me, saying, well, I'm the one that sent it to you, that... I'm sorry if I offended anyone regarding this album with my feedback. We never want to hear that, but it's an honest, it's honest. I'm only one person, you know, and other people who appreciate this stuff and love it, well, there you go. Okay, so happy to add it to the collection and there will be a time I play it. I'm sure that it will, it will happen. I think I'm excited about a lot of things and it just okay me no harm I have to do that and I'm gonna piggyback it I'm gonna let this go till I'm done um, I'm gonna piggyback that thought with a meeting I had with someone I know who is an associate friend it's like we, you know we, we know each other through the music scene but I had made some posts I had said something about Rush Limbaugh not hateful but just Basically saying, you know, we found out about Rush having throat cancer. 
I have empathy for him. I wish he showed empathy for me. And then this person I know popped up and wanted to take an issue with it. And I said, we can't talk about this online, you know. We can talk about this in, in person. So we met today. And uh, it was a very good meeting. And these sort of things need to be talked about in person. I'll continue to post my thoughts online, which will always be misconstrued by whoever. But it was good to talk to the person one-to-one -one because it just, again, illustrated to me how clear it is that we all live in the mind and reality is what we perceive. Um, you know, I express myself well, especially in person. And when I don't use the word should, and I had to explain that to this person today because they kept coming to points where they were saying should, should. And I just said, well, wait a second, aren't you making a lot of assumptions? Why are you assuming that you're in charge so that you can say what others should do? And they would have to pull back. That's not what I said. Wait a second, that's just what you did. Now, think about, think about it. So, I don't know why. I guess what I'm getting at is that perception is very unique and individual. Someone else that will love this to death. Right now, I find it boring. Maybe another day it'll be different. But that conversation with my friend was good because, you know, of course, we left. We ended the, sh the conversation after about an hour and a half, hugging each other. And I made it clear that, you know, people are hung up on buzzwords and the manipulation of the media, the way that people talk, um, people get caught on words like conservative, liberal, left, right. And it's like, I kept clarifying. And then communism and socialism, I kept saying, why do you keep bringing those, those terms up? I, I'm none of those things. I didn't, I didn't bring up any of that. Then when the word hate came up, I said, where did that come from? I've never used the word hate, you know? It's what's inside of our head that we're operating on. Our perception, our filter, each person's filter is what they're operating on. And he and he finally was able to get to the point, oh yeah, so I'm I am I see where I'm assigning my how what I see to what you're saying. I said, Yeah, don't do it. I'm telling you what I mean. You keep telling me what you see. But what you see isn't what I mean. And it, if we could get more of that understood, man, we could, we could get a lot more done. But everyone is operating from a, a, a loaded, from, with loaded dice and thinking with buzzwords that are fed to them. Most people are not thinking for themselves because that's the first thing that happens when I get to a point in these conversations where people say, okay, what about you? What do you think? Let's take it. Let's get off of the radio, let's get off of the TV, and so-and-so. Tell me what you say. Tell me what you think. Not we. Who's we? And every time I have this part, conversation with, like this with people, clarity either is achieved or it becomes obvious the person it just doesn't get it, you know? Because they'll start talking circles, and I'll just point it out again and again. And I'm not saying, I don't have the answers. We're having a conversation where it's like I'm giving feedback here about what's going on here. Um, this whole conservative, liberal, the whole versus thing is sick. We're, we're past the point where labels are useful. It's a sickness because we can't think straight. wonderful. You know what? I could keep going. I'm going to stop here. I have a bunch of records. I'm going to put a bunch of, put a bunch of records away. I'll stop here and do a poll soon. And remind you, Stupid Morning Bullshit is coming to Omaha. That's happening on Friday. 